Welcome to Just Our Imagination Challenge. It is hosted by Brenda from Rustic and Lace, Kathy Jo DIYs, and the Busy Housewife is the co-host. Please check out the playlist below in my description box of all these wonderful ladies' creations. I would appreciate it. Thank the you very much. The challenge was for all of us to use mouse traps, clothes pins, and spoons. At first, I was like, "What? Are you kidding me? What am I going to come up with?" I was stumped at first. So then I decided to take my clothes pins and I'm gonna dye them. So I have them in some food coloring. I made purple, blue, and red. And I let them soak for about an hour and then dry. Now I'm going to take a dollar store reform and I'm going to flatten it. And I'm using my jewelry hammer. Which I end up breaking later on in this video and I'm not too happy because it cost me a good bit of money. But, as you know if you're following me, I am redoing my craft room and everything is everywhere. And I was actually working, getting ready to paint my jewelry desk right now. So anyhow, I'm flattening out my frame. And just say one part came apart. It don't matter if it's distorted. You're not going to say it. The funny thing is, I had just enough clothespins. I went and bought clothespins. And I lost them. Yes, I lost them already within the last week. I had to scrounge around today to find these clothespins to do this DIY. So I have this beautiful sign I found at Dollar Tree. I really like this sign. Normally, I'm pretty picky, but this one caught my eye when I was in there last week, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do something with this sign. So first I'm deciding I'm going to add it on. But then as you see as the video goes on, I changed my mind. But in order to add it on, you got to do it through the back anyhow. You gotta pull the back side up and stick it through. It took me a minute to think about it. I was like, wait a minute, I know you do this. So I turned my reef over and turned my sign over. Going through all this trouble. But if you decide to do this part first, this is how you do it. You just tuck it under and then pull the top one up. But I recommend waiting. So I just cut the top off because it's like shoelaces and it's really weird. So I became pretty creative with this challenge. There was more I wanted to do, I will say that, but I have not been feeling well this whole weekend. But I do have many more spoon and fork DIYs coming with jewelry. I'm so excited. During my little research I found so many ideas. So here I have my clothes pen that I had drying on a ply plate in front of a heater and I'm using natural looking clothes pens. So I have my paint sort of purple and blue they didn't die that great, but it still turned out pretty. It's best to let them soak overnight. So here I zoom backwards, outward, so you can see more. I'm adding the um, purple ones for... And you add it... On the second ring... Then the last ring. So the second ring and the third ring. Alternate. Forget the first ring is this. I think. No, I didn't.
<laughs> oh my god, I just made this. Okay, you put the clothespin on the very first two rings. And then you put the second one on the second and third ring. Goodness gracious. Sorry, you guys. I'm, like I said, I don't feel good. So I'm alternating it back and forth. So we have a, diff a nice design. And I'm alternating my colors as I go into each space. But as you will see, I do run out of colors, or enough to do another whole section, so I alternate between my colors. It still turned out really pretty. I end up dyeing 20 clothespins of each color, and then I had that stack there. So I used 20 purple, 20 blue, 20 red. And then whatever natural I had left. I knew tw um, I don't know how many fits on each ring. One, two, three, four, five. Thirteen. Thirteen fits on each section. So here I am. I said, forget this darn sign. Let's get out of my way. <laughs> so, I'm doing my purple color. So we did blue, which looks purple, but it's blue. Blue, pink, natural, and then purple. Now, I'm down to the nitty gritty here on my clothespins. So I'm adding my blue. Then I'm adding my natural. Nope. Good God Almighty. Don't mind me, you guys. I don't even know what I'm doing in this video. I'm jumping all around. I decided to add the pink ones on that side. Remember, the first closed pin goes on the first two rings, and the second closed pin goes on the second and third ring. And that fourth ring, we're gonna, that's where we're going to glue our sign all to, which you will see. And I'm at a clothespin. I have one clothespin there. I didn't even see it. And you know what? That would have fit in there. Now I'm looking. I will have to put that in there. I didn't even notice I have one clothespin left. So I'm figuring out how I want to make my top. Which one? I'm gonna make my top here, so I'm gonna stick my sign through, turn it over, tie it up, hot, reinforce it with some hot glue, stick that clothespin back on, and then bring my twine string to the side of it. Then I'm going to secure my sign. So I'm going to hot glue. Sorry, my table was shifted from moving. I had to push it out of my way in order to get my hot glue from being stuck in between the, with the drawer. And I hit my camera. So I'm just hot gluing along the frame. And then hot gluing underneath a couple of the clothespins and holding it down in place. This is my second reef I've ever made. No, third. I did pine cones. Last week I did the farmhouse style. And this one I'm doing with clothespins. So, my reef is done. You see at the final reel. Here's this mouse trap. I had no idea where I was going with this mouse trap. I only saw one DIY you can do with the mouse trap. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a paper clip holder magnet thing. Oh, a note holder for your fridge. So I'm going to take some old Waverly chalk paint and ballet slipper. 
keeping with my little pastel color theme. And I'm just going to give it a coat of paint. Not realizing, duh, it is not going to stay stuck to that spring. So don't worry about painting your spring. One good thing about Waverly Chalk Paint is it, you only have to do one coat. It covers up very well, as you say. So I'm carefully lifting it up where I'm not going to snap my fingers. I do not like mouse traps. I couldn't, when they said that, and even trying to look for a DIY using this, seeing all the mouse was, ugh, creeping me out. I cannot stand mice at all. Thank God I have two cats. I live out in the country. So I decided I'm going to take a clothes pin here. And I'm going to clip it all. Use it for a little clothes pin. Oh my gosh. Paper clip. <laughs> uh, just a cheap old paper clip from Dollar Tree. And I just cut it off. And I'm going to hammer it into this wood. Onto the side is a little hanger. And it really does stay. It's in there. Yeah, WME wasn't holding it, so it started loosening up. So, just touching it up real quick because I don't have my fingers all over this thing. Gonna dry it. Believe it or not, I really like how this turned out. I actually like how all my DIYs turned out. Tell me what you think below in the comment box. Which one's your favorite? I don't have a favorite. I like them all, actually. And I'm not being biased or anything, but... I am worrying about that stupid spring and then after it dries it starts cracking off and I realize, oh my goodness, that is not going to stay on there. I was debating if I should use this piece. And it wouldn't work if I would have put it underneath because then it wouldn't hold the paper. So I'm like, and that's where it starts cracking in the spring so I'm um, taking it off if you're new here welcome if you're one of my subscribers welcome back nice to have you guys all my crafty friends here I have some lace ribbon that I got off of, uh, I think I got that one off of Amazon but you can actually get it off in, I don't know if you guys ever heard of a website called Wish it's a legit website not like Tem Temu but I, we, we won't go there in my conversation Wish is a cheap Chinese website just takes a long time to ship to you but they are legit and you can get stuff cheap so I'm just adding some little detail here with my flower lace. And I'm scraping off the extra paint. Now I have, I do jewelry, and I chose, I'm bringing jewelry to my channel this year, so I have tons of stuff. So I grabbed some odds and end things I had real quick. I had no idea where I'm going with this. I'm looking through my stash, like, okay, what can I use that I can get too quick. Like I said, I'm redoing my craft room, and believe it or not, all my jewelry stuff's, like, packed up. 
ready to be moved. I was doing that last night, even though I haven't been feeling good. I've been trying to craft and clean and move my room at the same time. On top of trying to rest. Okay, much better. I wanted to zoom in some for you guys. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I had this little piece I already made in my stash. Oh great, I zoom in, now I can't see. I had this embellishment I bought a long time ago at Michael's. I bought a whole bunch of stuff on clearance. Never used this stuff yet. Had no idea what to use until this DIY. So YouTube is giving me an excuse to use some of my stock that I've never used before. Here I went and got my jump rings and I found these really pretty beads that I had on my desk in my other craft room that I'm moving from. A lot of this stuff I already have done, like the beads that I just added on are already wire wrapped and I will be showing all that in the future on how you do that. So I'm just adding my jump ring to this embellishment. I'm adding a bead to it and I'm going to hook it on the little bar underneath there and I have the wrong pliers but this is all I can find right this second all my stuff packed away I'm using flat nose pliers and I should be using needle nose pliers so I'm struggling put out the wrong tools and supplies but I'm still trying to bring you guys tutorials and videos during this mess So I have another bead here that I made with the loops on it and I added my little charm onto it with my little bead and I added that to the little clothespin that I hammered into the side. Then I'm deciding, okay, what else can I do? So. The little flower in the middle had a pearl, so I had these little pearls, and I'm like, I'm just gonna glue some of these little pearls on, too. And I'm just checking to make sure I can put pearls in certain places that the spring would not interfere. And then I'm sitting here looking for something else, like, okay, I need something else. Because there's still a little hook on the very top of it. I thought I cut this part out. Sorry, you guys. Oh, no. I thought that that's when I was going to my craft room. Oh, no. I was looking for my magnets that I threw on the side on my table because it's L-shaped desk. 
that I just did a tutorial on, but when I came down to do this project, I had to clean up my desk. And I could not find my magnets. That's where you should always clean your craft room table after you're done. So here I have a bunch of findings and embellishments. Actually charms. Findings and charms. In this little container. I was going to. I realized that was a toggle. Though. And I was going to use this heart in here. But I'm like no I'm not going to waste my toggles. So I'm looking what the heck is in here. Something that. I don't have to dig for. So I found this cute little heart, like has a lock on it type thing. So I add a bead to it, and I just hooked it on that little loop they had on top of the mouse trap, and that way it hangs down. Still not satisfied. You guys should know me. I didn't have my piece on tight enough and it got stuck on the magnet. <laughs> oh, that was too funny. So then I have this other charm that I made. Actually, bead, wire wrap bead I made. And I wanted to add that on to match the one that was dangling from the right side of the mouse trap. So I decided to put a jump ring and put it in this area. But I didn't like the way it looked. And you'll see that and I take it off. It was just sticking out funky, wasn't working. So I decided to add on a different area onto that embellishment I had hanging there. And that piece is done. Now I'm satisfied. Rain up its messes. Move on to DIY number three. Them handy dandy spoons. What is she gonna come up with with these spoons? Let's watch and see. I really do like my mousetrap. I will you keep that. If I'm not done, I'm gonna touch it up. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Every time I think I'm done with something, I come back and do something else. Oh, gosh. Too funny. I swear, I'm done now. Now we're moving to these spoons. I only did two projects in this video, but I am making more. Because this is pretty interesting. So here's where I broke my really expensive jewelry hammer. I'm not happy. Don't waste your good tools. I'm pissed. Sorry, excuse my language. I got out the old, crappy old hammer. And then, now of course, I do jewelry, so I have these... type of pliers where you can make bigger jump rings and circles and rings and whatever for wire wrapping so I'm bending my spoon first I was going to use it like this as a handle and you can do it that way And leave it just like that and drill some holes into it. Now I will say in this video, I could not find my drill bit. It's MIA. So I decided, anyhow, I didn't want that spoon part on here. I'm cutting it off. With these bolt cutters that I have. And I'm fixing my end. To make it straight again. And I'm going to hammer it to flatten it back out. Now I have a really nice pull handle. 
So I have these magazine boxes I just bought from my craft room. And I'm going to use these spoons that I got free off the side of the road. Believe it or not, someone was having a yard sale and was throwing this stuff away with a free sign. I got a whole thing of flatware free that I was going to use for big bakes. And then this DIY came up with spoons and I'm like, oh, I'm going to use these free spoons. But now I've been so many other things you can use with flatware when it comes to jewelry designing. So... I'm mean, super excited I got all these free. And now so I'm going to run to the thrift stores and find me some really nice fancy spoons. So I decided I'm just going to hot glue it on. It's cardboard. Simple, easy, cute, I love it. Gives us some really nice fancy detail. So I'm going to do all my boxes, I have 12 of them. Now I'm going to take another spoon. And I walk away. Sorry, I really didn't have time to like rewatch and cut everything out in this video. Oh, I know where I went. I went to go get my stuff from my other room. So here I am flattening out the spoon. This time I'm serious. I really flattened the spoon out. And look, oh, I'm really hammered now. I'm taking my anger out on it. <laughs> this I normally would not do at this desk. But because, look, it is flat. But since, like I said, I'm moving craft rooms, I have no choice right this second. So I'm going to take my. Can't eat any wonderful jewelry making pliers here that I have. And I'm going to bend this into a hook. Now, I really wish I could have found my... Oh, here I have my letter punches. Stamps. Metal stamps. And I'm putting in the word... No, that's where I was trying to put a hole in it. Like, duh. It ain't gonna work with that. Again, I'm not in the right room with the right tools. And I didn't even think about it. I actually have a special power punch for metal. And I could have grabbed that in my jewelry desk. But, again, packed away. So, bear with me on this one, because I am doing what I can with my limited supplies that I have at hand. So, I have nothing to make a hole right this second. So, if you don't have anything to make a hole, I'm going to show you what you can do. Now here I'm taking my metal letter stamps and I'm just going to stamp in the word love but L-U-V into my metal. Which again, if I was with my proper supplies and all, I could have used my asset and everything and made it the love board stand out.
Yes, I know. You guys don't understand what all that is, but if you're ever interested in learning jewelry and metal smithing and everything, join my channel, subscribe, and when I do get to doing that, of antiquing metal with acid and all, you will learn how to do it. And what it does is it brings the letters out and makes them black. And then you have to polish the whole thing. It did work. I know you guys probably can't see it, and I'm sorry. So here's where I decide, okay, you see the drill and all there. I tried to put a screw in on it, it just wasn't working. I don't know where my drill bit is, so I'm just going to hot glue a paper clip on the very back of it as my hanger. So this is a way you guys can do it if you want to make these at home without buying a bunch of tools. And believe me or not, it works. And you will see it in the final review. I wouldn't say that would be a permanent solution. I would add some E6000 or some super glue or something. But for right now, for the video's sake, that's what I'm doing when I don't have my proper supplies to put a hole in it, which I will do. So now to the final reveal. Here is my beautiful Easter sign with my closed pen here is my mouse trap notepad note holder magnetized on my cabinet with all my embellishments and then here's what I did with my spoon I'm using it to hold my Dollar Tree wreath forms which is great because I still have plenty of room to add more and then here is the knob on my magazine boxes that I made so please like and subscribe and tell me which one your favorite thank you for watching God bless